Hi Scatterdelic, it's Scatter Matt here from Canada. Uh, have you ever wondered how hundreds, thousands of years ago, humans managed to find their way at night without without a compass, without uh, without GPS? Well, if it's a clear night and you can see the stars, it's actually not that hard. Even with you know a fair amount of light pollution that you get in a lot of cities today, the brightest stars can usually point you in the in the direction you want to you want to find. It's a little hard to show that on YouTube, unfortunately. Uh, the equipment you need to capture the stars on video is very much specialist equipment, and none of it I have. But there are lots of websites and lots of uh, apps that you can get for your phone that can uh, let you practice. So we're going to use one right now. This is a, a website that I've discovered called Sol uh, Stellarium Web. And uh, I've already got it set up to be over um, the UK headquarters of scouting, Gilwell Park in the Epping Forest. So let's take a look around. I've made this a little bit difficult by zooming in a lot, but there are three constellations that are useful in the northern sky. There's the Big and the Little Dipper, and another one called Cassiopeia. And I've just noticed that I just pulled Cassiopeia into view and it's this cluster of five here that form kind of a w shape or an m shape depending on uh, the time of night if uh if it's rotated the other way around a cassiopeia is uh referred to as the queen's throne uh, so if we imagine her feet here her head looking out this way roughly this way will point to it'll point to a particularly bright star there's actually one right here that I think is what we're looking for. So we'll look around that one to see if we're right. And now that I'm looking, I see that it is indeed right. So this star that Cassiopeia was pointed at is the North Star, Polaris. And conveniently, it's the very tail, the very end of the handle of the little dipper, the little, the little spoon right there. Now that's the Little Dipper. The Little Dipper's handle kind of curves up. The Big Dipper's handle curves down, and that's a big, easy way to tell the difference. So if you find the Little Dipper with its handle sticking up, just find the end of the handle, job's done. You found the North Star. If you found the other one, and I happen to know ahead of time that Cassiopeia is on the other side of the North Star from Big Dipper, so if I just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, I've just found the Big Dipper, and it's this cluster of seven here. You see how the handle kind of bends down, whereas with the Little Dipper, the handle bends up. So the way that you find the North Star from the Big Dipper is you go to the end of the, sp end of the bowl of the spoon. These two stars point up, if you can imagine it up, right now it's upside down, point up and away towards that North Star. And once you've found the North Star, you line that up, you line yourself up, so that you're staring right at it, straight up, as much as possible. So we'll put it in the middle of my screen. And then I just pan down, and down, 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 down. Just going out of view, so I'll zoom out a little bit more. We see that star right there, Polaris just about right above north. Close enough to be going by if you're just using the stars to navigate. There's three constellations you can use to find your way in the northern sky. And uh, the great thing about a tool like this and a lot of these tools that you find um, on, on your phones is they have a mode where you can actually turn the constellations on and see how they connect to each other which is great for when you're practicing to make sure that you were right. We'll turn that on now. See Cassiopeia lights up. The Little Dipper, or as it's also known, Ursa Minor lights up. And then we'll go a little bit further. And we see all of Ursa Major. So Ursa Minor, Ursa Major are the, uh, the bears, the Great Bear. Um, not sure why the, uh, the Great Bear has such a long tail, but it's got a nice long tail. And so it points off there. Now, if you live in the Southern Hemisphere, as 
I know a lot of Scatterdelic's audience does. A lot of, a lot of folks from uh, Australia, New Zealand, I keep seeing popping up on, uh, on different contributions. This doesn't work. This works in the Northern Hemisphere because the North Star, right there, is in such a position that no matter where the Earth is in its orbit, it always seems to be exactly over the North Pole. So the whole night sky rotates around the North Star. And I'll mess with time a little bit on this website, and you can see how there's that one star that's not moving. It's staying put. That's, that's why that works in the northern sky. Only it doesn't work that way in the southern hemisphere. So we'll go down to uh, go down to Perth, Western Australia. Somebody tell me in the comments, am I pronouncing that correctly or is it... I, I think I've heard Parth? Oh dear. It's also the middle of the day. It's the middle of the day in Western Australia. So we'll have to, we'll have to go to the nighttime. Well, let's roll back in time to the night. And now we have a bit of a challenge. So in the southern sky, there is no star that sits exactly out the southern pole. That's a bit of a problem. It makes it a little bit difficult. But conveniently, there are a total of six stars that you can use to imagine imagine a couple of lines that cross that exact point that everything rotates around. And what I've found the best luck for finding it is first try to find Orion. So that's, we've got Orion right here, and you can always tell Orion by his belt, these three stars right here. And then he's also got a little sword right there, and here's the rest of Orion. Orion is the hunter. In, in Greek mythology. And what I've observed is Orion tends to be at the other end of the Milky Way, see the Milky Way here, tends to be at the other end of the Milky Way from the stars we care about. So what we're looking for is uh, the Southern Cross. And even even those, those of us in the Northern Hemisphere have surely heard of the Southern Cross. The Southern Cross is a hugely important uh, constellation um, throughout uh, a lot of so south of, uh, southern hemisphere cultures uh, tends to show up a lot on flags uh, because it's that important because it's needed for navigation and here we are at the other end of the Milky Way so again we're looking for four stars kind of making a kite shape but there are quite a few of those throughout the southern sky. In fact, we see two kite shapes here. We see one here, and we see one here. But which one is it, right? Well, remember I said you're looking for six stars. There are two other stars, two extra bright stars, that point kind of roughly toward, point in a line roughly toward the southern cross. If I look at this one here, I don't see any pairs of stars pointing to it. But if I look at this one here, lit up and given labels are Alpha Centauri and Hadar, and they point roughly towards this other, this cross here, this kite. And that is in fact the Southern Cross. And if you're looking really carefully, you can see a crux above this star. That's the other way that you know. Just to be sure, I'll turn the constellations on. And we see the labeled crux in the shape of a cross right there, so we know we're in the right place now, now that we're practicing. But how do we find south from the Southern Cross and these two other stars? Because these two stars are actually part of part of the process of finding, finding south. So what you do is you get these two stars pointing towards, towards the Southern Cross, as they do. Imagine a line between them and then another line going perpendicular to that line. So going right across my screen here, all the way out. And then you, got that, you get that line fixed in your head, and then you go up to the Southern Cross. And then you need another imaginary line 
Not the one going kind of across the cross and back towards those two pointer stars, but a, a line that'll point toward our line. So these two stars here, A crux and this G crux, B A crux. So these two stars here, and if we go this way, well, that just goes away from our line. So we'll go the other way. And conveniently, the screen's telling me, the website's telling me that that points toward a, a seven star Akinar. So that's that's convenient. We'll, so we imagine a line going through these three. And remember this other line we had here. So I'll just follow this out until, and you can't see it, but I'm tilting my head, imagining this other line, till about we cross that point here. So that's where I think south is. And same with the North Star I'll line that up right in the middle of my middle of my view, middle of my window, and then I'll slowly pan down. I missed a little. <laughs> it's here south here. But uh, that's how you do it. It takes you know it takes a little bit of imagination, but uh, when the stars are bright and the sky is clear, I mean if you think about all these constellations, there's a story that's been written and told through the ages for each one of them. So a little bit of imagination you can find what you're looking for. You can find your way. There are lots of different things that you can use with this knowledge. Uh, lots of different things that you can do with this knowledge. Um, you might use this to, you know, set up camp if, if you get to camp late at night. And you really just want to make sure that when you wake up in the morning, open your tent, you're not staring directly into the sun. So use the stars to make sure that you don't point your uh, your tent east. How else might you do that? I'd love to love to see what you think. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, be a little scoutadelic.